myself abhishek k sorathia i am from novik science college and i would like to talk about dark matter and dark energy and first of all let me thanks all of people to come here and have some interest in this uh, particular topic and this is presentations which are presented in powerpoint presentation competition which is organized by sir peti sarvajanik college of science and i used modern physics a book by kranath krane and two official website of nasa as a reference to make it so let me start my presentations with one of the quote which is given by adam rees he is nobel laureate american astrophysicist he said that it's everywhere really it's between the galaxies it is in this room we believe that everywhere that you have space empty space that you cannot avoid having some of this dark energy so first of all uh, the question is what is difference between these two dark matter and dark energy so let me simplify it the dark matter it's behave as attractive force like gravity it's hold up the whole universe while dark energy it's behave as repulsive force like anti gravity and we can see uh, this energy distributions and this chart of energy distributions which says that normal matter or a visible matter which consists only 5% of this entire cosmos while most of the part of this universe is filled with dark man, uh, dark energy or dark matter and which is around 69% and 26% respectively so most of the most of the part is filled with that kind of uh, something which we cannot see throughout any type of uh, technology so let me talk about uh, its history so there were many people uh, in the history of dark matter who gave their tremendous contribution in it who, uh, and who uh, you know reveal who tried to reveal this uh, mystery of this dark matter but i would like to here talk about when history took turn it was a year 1933 swiss astrophysicist fritz zwicky who studied galaxy cluster at that time and let me introduce to uh, tell me uh, uh, let me tell you what is the galaxy cluster so it just uh, a, a group or set of ma- uh, plenty of galaxies uh, by together and uh, the whole group is called cluster and uh, it's uh, galaxies uh, so we can say the whole group as a galaxy cluster and he studied while working at california institute of technology and zwicky applied virial theorem to the coma cluster it is one of the cluster of galaxies and obtain evidence of unseen mass at a first time and he called it uh, dunkle materia it's in german language which means dark matter so it was the first uh, time someone who uh you know uh, move little ahead in this field of dark matter so how actually this dark matter turned out it's a really good questions because uh, you know if we not uh, see it so however we uh, know about it that ha- there is something uh, in this galaxies in the form of dark energy or dark matter so according to kepler's third law uh, we derived uh, this uh, equation Uh, this is my final equations but uh, we can uh, do all the uh, calculations and then after we can get this uh, final equations and by that equation we measure the tangential velocity of a star in distant galaxies any stars uh, uh, any velocities of any stars in the galaxies we can determine by doppler shift of their light and if we plot the graph uh, uh, and this graph is versus uh, rotation speed which is velocity versus distance from center of any star and if we plot the graph so we get this yellow line i hope you can see this is yellow line which is expected but uh, what vera rubin found she was american astronomer and she gave tremendous contribution 
in a field of uh, motions of uh, stars in distant galaxies and she concluded that every star of entire galaxy is moving around its center at a same velocity at a same speed however it however it's nearer the center of the galaxies or at the edge of the galaxies every star of the galaxies it's moving around its center at a same speed and we can uh, we get this uh, green line which is observed so i hope you notice uh, can you notice this uh, why this contradiction uh, occur here between this observations and expectations why this uh, graph of two uh, are not match with each other so uh, let me uh, to understand it uh, uh, i uh, thought some examples that what if the giant wheel start to rotate more and more faster than its normal speed so obviously people started falling down from that or they fling from that right or however if they wear not uh, any belt then and then only so there is large quantity of invisible matter in this galaxies which is nothing but the dark matter and this dark matter work as that belt and by supplying gravitational force to every stuff of this entire galaxies and scientists believe that this dark matter is maybe surrounded all the galaxy in spherical halo form which you can see in this figure second figure and which has radius several times greater than the galaxy radius because you can see this uh, galaxy is a very little portion while most of the portion surrounded by galaxy is uh, filled with dark matter or its shape of the dark matter so you can see the how the giant structure of dark matter now the question is uh, what kind of objects made up this dark matter so let me go throughout it or uh, let me uh, tell you briefly that there is two objects first is machos massive compact halo objects like massive black holes neutron stars and brown dwarfs this kind of objects made up this dark matter and other is wimps weakly interacted massive particles like axions now move on to the dark energy so what is this dark energy so according to this figure we can understand this you can see here this uh, uh, yellow spots this yellow point is the big bang event by which the whole universe and time are uh, born you know were born so from this uh, point we can say that this accelerations of expansion of universe is increased day by day with increase the time so maybe this dark energy is responsible behind it and it has sort of three explanations let's move on to the first is property of space that albert einstein he was a genius of course no doubt but he was the first person to realize that empty space is not nothing i emphasize this line uh, empty space is not nothing we uh, you know sometimes we think that uh, in the space uh, there is nothing there is darkness only but there is something there is no more nothing so he revealed the first property that uh, there is possible to more space come into existence and second property is that empty space can possess its own energy in the form of dark energy of course so now the another explanation is says that quantum theory of matter it says that empty space is nothing is no more empty it's actually full of temporary or virtual particles that continually form and disappear form and disappear but when physicists try to calculate this amount of this energy can you believe they got answer 1 a 10 raised to 120 times too big can you believe we can't imagine this much uh, uh, numbers so it means it wrong and wrong by a lot so the mystery continues now the third explanations about dark energy is that 
dark energy is kind of dynamical energy fluid or field which fills a whole space and something whose effect on expansion of universe like i mentioned earlier and some theorists have named this quintessence quintessence i emphasize this word quintessence but think if the quintessence is the answer however we still don't know what is it look like what it interact with or why it exist and so many questions so we can say that mystery still continues and at last uh, let me conclude that more is unknown there is than is known however we know of this universe the unknown things is more is more than is known you know and uh, i add up my uh, own ideas that i want like to give nickname to both dark matter and dark energy it's that both are mystery creator because however we go deeper and deeper in this field of uh, physics or astrophysics or cosmology we get as many as mystery than before and uh, i add up one my own thoughts that dark matter and dark energy it's also connected with us as a human's qualities how how can it's possible uh, because it's remind us that we have to be humble we have to be egoless because think imagine if we know everything of this entire cosmos if we have every knowledge of this entire universe it's still just a 5 percentage of this universe of this entire brahmand remember the chart of energy distributions like i mentioned this uh, uh, second or third slide so that's from my side thank you all of you to be a part of my journey and i want to give most 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 thanks to all of people who remains with me at the last uh, remains connected with me at the last of this presentation so keep it up